How has North Korea, one of the poorest countries in the world, managed to evade UN sanctions and pay for its nuclear weapons program? The answer is through a secretive government organization known as Bureau 39, which obtains foreign exchange to fund Kim Jong-un's regime. In the second of two investigations, how insurance scams, computer fraud and illegal arms sales keep the money rolling in. North Korea is like Game of Thrones, but without the dragons. It's an aristocratic society and it's capitalist. And everything is geared to make sure that there's as much cash for Kim as is possible. Bureau 39 is involved in everything that makes money for North Korea. Selling arms, smuggling of drugs, counterfeiting of U.S. bills. This is about hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Everything. Make dollars. Hamburg, Germany. Until a few years ago, the North Korean state insurance company, KNIC, had a branch in an innocuous looking apartment block here. Six North Korean officials made deals with major European insurance companies. One case among many. In 2015, the European Union put the North Korean insurance company on their sanctions list. The accusation, co-financing of the nuclear weapons program through Bureau 39. Experts estimate that with crashed helicopters and similar tricks, the Kim regime earned several hundred million dollars. But how does the Kim regime manage to transfer the millions it makes to Pyongyang? The answer is simple, through diplomatic channels. <laughs> 대체로 39호실은 뭐 대표부가 나와 있던지 대사관에 소속돼 있던지 이 사람들은 대체로 예, 그 본국의 이제 수출품을 해외에 팔고 이제 본그 39호실이 요구하는 물자를 예, 들여 보내주고요. 그다음에 이제 North Korea uses its worldwide network of embassies to ferry money back to Pyongyang. North Korean officials enjoying diplomatic immunity carry the money in cash in their flight baggage. A simple but efficient way to ensure the cash flow doesn't stop. Well, North Korean embassies have a diplomatic function, but that's often mainly ceremonial. But their true function is financial. It's also illegal, mainly. North Korean diplomats are basically cash carriers for Kim. They're entrepreneurs, they're businessmen. They may be drug lords, they may be weapon smugglers, but they carry a diplomatic passport. So you can't touch them. Berlin. Right in the middle of the city lies the North Korean embassy. The North Koreans have been renting out one of the buildings as a hostel for tourists. 
they've been earning 38,000 euros per month in rent. Using embassy grounds for such activities is against diplomatic practices and contravenes UN and EU sanctions. Like any other country, the main goal of the embassies is to serve the state and the North Korean state's priorities in particular. So because sanctions are so comprehensive now, much of the activities conducted in these embassies may be prohibited. Providing military supplies, training, and much of that has been done through North Korea's embassies, particularly in Africa and the Middle East. So out of all the countries in the Middle East currently, the Syrian Arab Republic has the greatest levels of prohibited cooperation with North Korean military entities. Hafiz al-Assad, the father of the current Syrian despot, and Kim Il-sung were friends from the 1960s on. Back then, the North Koreans helped the Syrians during the war against Israel and supplied them with weapons and ammunition, an important source of income, right up till today. Using tactics similar to those of 18th century pirates, Bureau 39 runs ships under false flags and fake names. According to the UN, North Korea has thus managed to send large numbers of weapons to Syria. Between 2012 and 2017, at least 40 shipments from North Korea passed through the Suez Canal. But in 2018, the UN managed to have one of them intercepted. So we found something, cargo on its way to Syria. These were acid-resistant tiles and valves, which could be used in chemical weapons development. But also missile fuel is highly corrosive, and such tiles could be used for a ballistic missile program as well. The bill of lading clearly gave as an address in Syria, an established front company for Syria's Scientific Studies Research Center, the SSRC, which is responsible for Syria's ballistic missile and chemical weapons development program. The, Russians still insist the chemical weapons the produced in these laboratories have been used by Syria's dictator Assad against his own people for years. It's a little-known fact that the Syrian chemical weapons program was created with the help of North Korean technicians and scientists. Some of these sites were bombed by the United States. The purpose of our actions tonight is to establish a strong deterrent against the production, spread, and use of chemical weapons. Well, when the, the Americans bombed the, um, the chemical laboratories, they bombed the North Koreans there. Yeah. Whether they knew they were bombing the North Koreans, I don't know. But they did, yes. The North Korean uh, presence in Syria is really much underreported and underappreciated. One-third of all buildings in Syria have been destroyed. A tragedy and a business opportunity. The Syrian regime hopes for billions from international donors for the reconstruction of the country. The necessary work brigades are to come from North Korea. The two countries signed a contract at a meeting in June 2019. Dirty deals between despots. The money that's earned by Office 39, it goes straight into the coffers of the leadership. It is used on the one hand to provide for luxury items. It is used to pay for the, the Mercedes-Benz cars that somehow found their way into North Korea um, despite the sanctions. But it, also, it is also used, and this is probably more important, to deliver the best hackers uh, you, can, you can train. As early as the mid-80s, Kim Jong-il started training the most talented children to become cyber hackers. They're also good money earners. Ransomware, like uh, the WannaCry virus, for example, is considered to come from the North Koreans. It is the biggest cyber attack the world has ever seen. Hundreds of thousands of computers around the world in about 150 countries rendered useless. 
Now, the U.S. government is publicly placing the blame for that cyber assault, uniquely dubbed WannaCry, squarely on Kim Jong-un's army of hackers. In Seoul, computer specialists are hot on the heels of North Korean hackers. Simon Choi works as a consultant for South Korean intelligence agencies. Experts estimate that between 600 and 1300 hackers work for Kim. 어 대표적으로 일단 금융권을 해킹하는 팀은 전 세계적으로도 좀 뭔가 부각을 나타내는 건두 개가 있습니다. 하나가 이제 북한의 라자루스나 또는 북한에 있는 또 다른 그런 금융권을 해킹하는 팀이고 하나가 이제 카바나기라고 하는 러시아가 아마도 배후에 있을 거라고 추정을 하는 Experts estimate that up to 2 billion dollars have been stolen by young highly trained North Korean hackers. North Korea has developed an efficient education system for its upper middle class. Here at Pyongyang Middle School, the children who will later be computer specialists, scientists and engineers are trained to shape the future of the country. Hello everybody, nice to meet you. I am Ian, I am eight years old, but I'm a student. I can speak English, I can speak Chinese, I can speak Russian too. The students also learn how to use computers. They have access to a very limited North Korean version of the internet. Uncensored variety is strictly forbidden. North Korea's rulers know that once the doors to the digital world have been thrown open, they can never be shut again. But despite all precautions, in 2007, North Korea faced the first digital data leak in its history. The data of Pyongyang's municipal registry, with more than two million entries. Professor Broyker obtained a copy and is currently analyzing it using special software. We never had this kind of up-to-date um, information ever. If you want to understand the system, the regime, the party, you can now actually go about analyzing and mapping Pyongyang for the first time. And we're no longer dependent on anecdotes, on people who tell us where, where all the buildings are. We can actually now see who's inside the buildings, what companies there are, what departments there are, um, and where you should locate them. The data proves the main building of Bureau 39 is close to the seat of power, right in the middle of Pyongyang, just a stone's throw away from the headquarters of the Workers' Party. It's divided into six main departments and employs several thousand people in Pyongyang alone. They have their own fleet of vehicles, kindergartens, a golf course, an ostrich farm, and even their own bank. These six main departments are in turn responsible for hundreds of individual companies throughout North Korea. They control iron ore and diamond mines, jewelry factories, and textile companies. They're mainly specialized in exporting goods abroad. Other companies in the bureau earn foreign exchange through forced labor, arms smuggling, and insurance fraud. But one rule applies to all. The name Bureau 39 is never mentioned outside North Korea, so it remains invisible. Impossible for UN sanctions monitors to detect. The Everything. 
Uh, also make dollars. North Korea is changing. An impoverished socialist state has turned into a country with a highly flexible shadow economy. In many ways, North Korea is run like a commercial company. All that matters is cash for Kim. The workers here are no longer slaving away for the revolution, but for the wealth of their leader and his cronies. The gap between rich and poor is widening. While the population in Pyongyang enjoys a constantly growing prosperity, 40% of the rural population still suffer from malnutrition. What the database shows, beyond any doubt, is that Office 39 not only exists, and now we can prove what it does. It owns companies, it operates these companies, it exports all kinds of things. Um, and that is actually um, quite an, an important development in understanding how North Korea manages to earn money abroad. Um, we now know exactly through what kind of companies Office 39 does this. The Kim Jong-suk silk spinning mill, named after Kim Jong-un's grandmother, a model factory. 1,600 workers are employed here, most of them women. They sort, process, and boil the cocoons of the silkworms to obtain the precious yarn. The silkworms come from a province south of Pyongyang. About 200 tons of silk are produced here every year. A luxury product, expensive and labor-intensive. The factory's entire production is intended for export abroad, but the supervisors are unwilling to disclose who the foreign customers are. I'm not sure anymore who suffers under those sanctions. It's a hassle, I'm sure, for North Koreans, but they do find ways around it. One of the problems is that neither China nor Russia is, um, is helping in enforcing the sanctions. Textiles are the second most important North Korean export product after coal. 우리가 방직공, 아, 방직공업이 아니고 우봉이 만들어 보자. 피복. 국외 기계 소문이 나대. 뼈 쓰기 좋은 게. 소문 나는데 국외 수출 진짜 되고 있는지 이에 대해서 알고 있겠어. 이제 아는 만큼만 좀. 피복 즉 분요. 현재는 제 알고 있던 일부 되는 걸로 알고 있습니다. 적지 않게 합병, 합병 형태로 되고 있습니다. 우리나라 기업들입니다. 합병이라고 합니다. 중국이 좀 있고 그다음에 저기 동남아 쪽에도 있고 소방 나라도 소방도 뭐 옛날부터 이전에 아직 존재하는지 모르겠어요. Dandong, China. North Korea's gateway to the world. And a symbol of how futile the UN's efforts are to dry up Kim's sources of cash. The Sino-Korean friendship bridge across the Yalu River it's one of the few ways to enter or leave North Korea. Every day, trucks queue in front of the customs checkpoint. Smugglers, traders, and also the agents and entrepreneurs of Bureau 39, they're all hoping for a quick deal here. China is by far North Korea's most important trading partner. Financial experts estimate that 90% of North Korea's exports go to its powerful neighbor in the North. Thousands of North Koreans are said to work in textile factories in the region. Disguised as businessmen and equipped with hidden cameras, we film in one of the factories. Chinese textile companies hire North Koreans because their wages are lower than those of Chinese workers. These seamstresses work day and night and often sleep on the company premises. They're likely to be locked up for years far away from their families. Together with a team of labor lawyers, trade experts, and data specialists, 
Remco Breuker tries to find out whether European brands work with Chinese companies that directly or indirectly employ North Koreans. We've managed to prove the existence of a significant amount of North Korean slave labor in the supply chain of some of the world's leading clothing companies. But more than that, Chinese factories outsource to North Korean factories in North Korea. Basically, in Europe and in, in the US, we've come to an agreement that we no longer wish to find slave labor or child labor in our supply chains. But if you look closer at some of these producers, you find that sometimes up to 90% of their production does not take place in China. It does not take place in the factories where the European and the American auditors come to check whether working conditions are decent. Yes, they are in those factories, but that's only where 10% of the products is made. The other 19% um, comes from North Korea. Broika's team investigated one Chinese textile company more closely. It's called Vendest. Their list of customers reads like a who's who of international fashion brands. The website features a men's jacket. Next to it, it says, Korean imported. The buttons carry a label, Amani jeans. Using trade databases, Broika's team analyzed Wong Dest's business relations between 2013 and 2019. The databases used customs data, showing which goods are sent back and forth between companies in different countries. China sends the material to make certain types of clothes to North Korea. One month later, they ship back in the same container, and then you have finished clothes. Those clothes are again shipped to, say, the Netherlands, or to Germany, or to uh, America. And from there, they're distributed into our stores. Between 2013 and December 2016, Vondest sent around $10 million worth of fabrics and raw materials to North Korea. During the same period, Vondest received Finnish garments worth almost $25 million from North Korea. Customs classify textiles by so-called HS codes. We take a closer look at HS code 6201. It stands for men's anoraks and jackets, like the Amani jacket on the website. Between 2013 and December 2016, Vondest imported garments worth $12 million with this code from North Korea. The same code is also used for deliveries from Vondest to Europe and the US. Among the customers, Amani. Amani jackets that look exactly like the one on Vondest's website can also be bought in Europe. This one costs 219 euros. It can't be proven beyond doubt whether garments like this one are made in North Korea, but can it be ruled out? We ask the fashion brands. Amani writes, we confirm that Vondest is one of our suppliers and as such is regularly subject to checks and inspections. The result of these checks being that no finished products are manufactured in North Korea. Like all our suppliers, it's also required to declare which subcontractors it uses and where these are concerned, it's also the case that none are in North Korea. We've also contacted Von Dest in writing. The company offered no explanation as to why and to what extent it trades with North Korea. One thing can be said for certain. Well-known fashion brands have their goods manufactured by a Chinese company that cooperates with North Korea a country where workers have no rights, where human life counts for nothing. Broika's investigation shows that this is not an isolated incident. For years and years, we've heard testimonies from North Korean SKPs who were in concentration camps that they had been forced there to produce textile for the export market. Um, and I think for the first time, I've been able to corroborate that through an external source, so not through a testimony. In this same database, I found the department, the bureaucratic department, that is responsible for managing the production of textiles for one of the concentration camps outside Pyongyang. It means that we not only buy clothes produced by forced laborers, maybe even slave labor, we may even 
uh, buy clothes all through Europe in America that was made in concentration camps by people who will never see the, 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 the light of day again. These are the kinds of camps that you don't leave until you're dead. That is just too horrific to, to put in words. And we're complicit. Hundreds of thousands of men and women secretly ensure the survival of the dictatorship. Their futures are sacrificed for the luxury of the regime and for our prosperity. Kim Jong-un runs his country like a company. His Bureau 39 does business with everything and everyone, including us. Thank you.